Good morning, and welcome to Holy Cross. Happy Lord's Day. I'm Tim Mulcahy, the deacon for the Mass this morning, and our presider is uh, Father Kestermeyer. Before we begin, there's a few announcements. Uh, first off, if you need a low-gluten host, please let us know or let a, an usher know before Mass so that we can accommodate your needs. Um, next Thursday, November 24th, is Thanksgiving Day. There will be only one Mass that day, and it will be at 9 a.m., uh, if you can, you can bring an item from your family's uh, meal and place it on the altar rail here to be blessed during the, the, the ceremony. And the office will be closed the following Friday, the 25th. Mass of Christian Burial was held this weekend for Sally Averill. Please keep her and her family in your prayers. Uh, please be sure to read this week's bulletin. There's important information regarding changes beginning with Advent and the start of our new liturgical year. Um, and for all you crafters, after three years, we're bringing back the Christmas Craft Fair Donut Sunday on December 11th. After all the Sunday Masses, if you'd like to sell something, please call the rectory and get signed up. Spots are limited, otherwise we'll see you at the Craft Fair. We'd like to extend a special congratulations to Stephen and Marianne Tripp, who recently celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Our celebration will begin in just a moment. Good morning. Can you hear me? My name is Margie Boyer. I'm a member of the Holy Cross St. Vincent de Paul Conference. We want to thank you, our parishioners, for the generosity shown to us in the past. And thank you all for your generous donations of winter coats last month. The Thanksgiving Day and Ash Wednesday collections are designated for the Holy Cross St. Vincent de Paul Conference. The money collected on these occasions is used to provide financial support to the poor and needy who live within our parish boundaries. The need has grown substantially during the last couple of years due to the large increases in rents and utilities. During the last fiscal year, we, Holy Cross St. Vincent de Paul Conference, helped the needy in the amount of $18,900. At this time, we are asking for volunteers to join us in assisting the poor and needy. You really get a wonderful feeling after helping someone in need of assistance by paying some utilities or rent or helping with needed food, clothing, or household items. Our funds are limited, so on Thanksgiving and Ash Wednesday, we ask for funds from you our parishioners. Your Thanksgiving envelope is marked for St. Vincent de Paul Conference. Please give prayerful consideration to making a generous financial donation. We ask you to drop it in the collection basket on Thanksgiving or on any Sunday. Again, we are looking for volunteers to join us in our efforts to help our neighbors in need. If you are interested, please call the rectory, give them your name and telephone number, and someone from the conference will call you. Thank you, and God bless each of you. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 583, Christ the Lord, number 583. And we will sing verses 2 and 3. Thunder 
blazing sun and quaking sea. Now he comes, our King in glory. Saints rejoice and darkness flees. Rising rays of light, his chariot, Christ the Lord has made us free. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Most Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the peace and joy of the Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we're celebrating the feast of Christ the King, and I will pretty much avoid talking about kings because we're American and most of us do not have a good experience of kings. Um, I want to talk instead about Christ as the fulfillment of the Father's plan and the center of all creation. So we'll see how that works out. God created everything to support us. And he gave us this creation to be a source of joy for us. But we have turned aside and become weak and tried to hog parts of it to ourselves by ways that God would not like. So for our weakness and our failure, for our sins, we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May our great and loving God indeed have mercy upon his children, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the fullness of his everlasting life. Amen. Let us praise the goodness of our God. Almighty and ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, please grant that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. We pray through our Lord Jesus, your Son, who lives now and reigns with you in the unity of the blessed Spirit, God forever and ever.
This Old Testament reading is from the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and shall be commander of Israel. When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them there before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go. I rejoiced because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the are set up the judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go. This New Testament reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father, for he has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Blessed is he. 
he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. Indeed, we have been condemned justly. For the sentence that we received corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. An expression we don't hear very much anymore is not seeing the forest for the trees. When you look so much at individual aspects of a situation that you don't get the so-called big picture and understand how it all fits together. In the course of the year, we do look at individual things as suggested by the gospel or other readings or other topics that are of interest. Today I want to stand back and I want to look at the forest. I'd, look to, I'd like to look at all of creation, but that's a little hard to do. We estimate pretty accurately that the universe is 13 billion years old from the most recent Big Bang, which might have been just one in a series. We don't know. There might be another one in the future. That's not our business either. I want to focus on the last 6,000 years, which is going back to about the time when we have some idea of what was going on in Egypt, in India, and in China, where there were already noticeable cultures. And I want to talk about some of the main aspects of what was going on during that period to help explain what we're celebrating today. The first thing I'd like to look at is an aspect. And it's very important to realize that this is the same throughout. Bad news, boys and girls, we're human. We are never going to be perfect in this world, no matter what we do. And some people will bust a gut trying to be perfect, kind of an obsessive sanctity, and will worry about it and beat themselves up when they're not. Sin is part of our lives. It is not our identity. Sin generally comes from pride, which is to say, I deserve, I can take it, I will, because I'm better, I work harder, I'm more handsome, whatever. 
And out of that comes division, separation, antipathy, antagonism, violence. And nowadays, we can go as far when we're viewing nation to nation, the danger of atomic war. Some of you are old enough to remember the Cold War and how delightful that was. That is a general background for what I'm going to say. In the Old Testament, we see God calling individuals and through them calling the whole people of Israel. We could think of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their wives. Very important. We could think of people like the prophets. Elisha, Elijah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah. We have people like Moses and David that we've just read about today. And all these people tried to bring God to the people and the people to God. They were successful in moving things along in our understanding of who God is, but they didn't change the world absolutely. If you look at it that way, even Christ didn't. I mean, he died a failure, right? It's only in our faith that we know that the victory has been won, which is what we're celebrating today. Along the way, these people spoke of God making a covenant with them. It's an agreement, it's a contract. I'll do this, you do that. And basically what it amounts to is, I will be your God and you will be my people. And you have to do this and that to show that you really believe and are holding that contract up so I know that you are doing what's right. And for the Old Testament, the law became externals. Circumcision, kosher, blah, blah, blah. Except that the prophets tried putting more life in it. But you wonder what God got out of all of that. As one of the prophets point out, he doesn't need your sacrifices. He created all of the things you're burning in my favor. What I want is your hearts. What did he do? He's been good to us. Unutterably good. Constantly. Patiently. What does he get out of it? He sends his son. You know how badly that ended. It says something about God's love. Then came the incarnation, and I want to make this as clear as I possibly can because I don't think that people really grasp this. The incarnation began, and that's not true, at the Annunciation when Mary said, why are you asking me? I'm God's humble servant. He doesn't have to ask. Whatever he does is okay. And I'm praising his name for it. If we're going to be consistent about abortion, we need to say that is when Jesus began. The birth is what we celebrate on Christmas. That's not the incarnation. And the incarnation isn't just what happened at the Annunciation. I say it's not true because the incarnation spread from there right up into the resurrection and the ascension of Christ. Those were all aspects of his incarnation in the world, his being tied to the same situation that every one of us is. Being born, going through puberty, making mistakes, working, learning, and dying. Even then, that's not true, because Jesus has always been incarnate in this world. It was created in him and for him, and it's always been destined that he was going to come and be one of us. It wasn't God taking care of a mistake. 
And at the end of the incarnation is when Jesus takes all of this and brings us back to the state of the garden. Let me give you an image. I don't know if many of you have seen this, but I'm a science fiction freak. And you get these movies where planets explode. Poof. Big chunks of this and that going everywhere. Think of the end of time as the, if that film run backwards, when all these mistakes and all these little bits and pieces somehow or other come back together and you see the perfect planet again. Because in Jesus, everything will be restored. Not just the planet, not just this world that we've done such a good job of screwing up, but ourselves. We will be restored to our lost innocence in Christ. That's what his incarnation is about. Well, Jesus died and rose, and then something happened called Pentecost. Now, again, think of it this way. In the Old Testament, there was the Father, except he is known as God. And the Jews had to fight like crazy to say, not only is he our God, you will be my people, I will be your God, but there is only one God, and I'm it. They had a terrible time coming to believe it and preach it. But the father sent his son, who said, he's my father, by the way, I'm also God. The father took off the center stage and left it to his son. And when his son died, he handed us off to the spirit. This is that third age when the spirit is alive and guiding the church, guiding us as a group and as individuals, just like in the Old Testament. In the early days, very early in the book of Genesis, there's a story of the Tower of Babel. They built the tower. It was going to go all the way up to heaven, six or seven stories tall. They were threatening God. They wanted to be like God. And he said, no, for your pride. Did I mention pride? I'm going to give you all separate languages so that you can't combine yourselves together on a project like this again. At Pentecost, we have that planet coming back together again. We have all of the people speaking the same language virtually, all of them understanding each other. And what came out of that was the Christian community, where they held all things in common, and where they loved, lived together as brothers and sisters as much as they possibly could, given the fact that they're sinners. And we are supposedly doing the same thing ourselves. Imperfectly, yes. But if you've had children, if you've been a child, you know that what counts is not what the kid does, but how hard the kid tries, with what love and what honesty, what generosity. That's the kind of kid that God wants himself. And if we could do our best, we're in. We're like Jesus. Look at the bunch he gathered around him. Frankly, one might have called them the bunch of losers. In the end, they all abandoned him. And then they turn around, and most of them were martyred. That is where we're living today. We call it the church. In the Nicene Creed, which we'll be repeating in just a minute, we re I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. One, if you think the church is united, you haven't been paying attention. Catholic does not mean Roman Catholic. It means universal. Look it up in a paper dictionary. I'm an English teacher paper dictionary. Universal Church, we're working on that with ecumenism. Francis is doing his level best. 
can we follow? But the holy part is the hard part. Holy is not our job. Perfect is not our job. That's God's. And he will give that to us if we show that we're doing our best and trying to receive the gifts that he offers us. But you know how it is with education. You bust your gut trying to get through first grade, and what happens? They send you to second grade, and it's all more. I figure I'm on something like grade number 68 at this point. We always have to go a little further and grow more in our faith in the way that we mature and act like real adults, loving adults, gentle, patient, and kind people. We're awaiting what? Today we're celebrating a feast for something which has not yet happened. Not the Lordship of Christ, but the visible Lordship of Christ. When everything comes together and all of us stand before God, we don't, I'm not going to go into today, but we're not judging as much as we realize who we've become and whether we really have chosen God or not and we send ourselves to hell. We chose ourselves, God said, okay, you want to be by yourself, or to run your own world, go over there. Spend eternity by yourself. I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend eternity with myself. I want to spend it with my brothers and sisters. Depends on what I do here. They better have kids in heaven, though. I love them. Let's celebrate and let us realize that God is calling us and helping us to be the kind of people he wants with him closely. We've already made a step by being here in church. Let's repeat the Nicene Creed, which we heard for the first time probably at our baptism. This is our faith. It should be the basis for our life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the whole Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us join together with one voice, with one heart, praying for the people of our parish, for ourselves, and for the world. Heavenly Father, bless Pope Francis, Archbishop Lucas, our pastor, Father Carl, all those who lead the church and guide us on our journey of faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all believers that we may come to a fuller understanding of Christ who holds our past, walks with us each day, and gives us a vision for tomorrow filled with compassion and mercy. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, bless leaders of government and for judges that they may recognize that their authority comes from God and that it is there for the service of the human community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, grant us the grace to be grateful for all our material gifts, food, and comforts, that we be able to share them with a generous heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all who are sick and all who bear the marks of suffering, of persecution, of starvation, and disease, that the world community may recognize the dignity of those who suffer and work to alleviate their pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear the intentions we each bring here today. Especially pray for those on our Holy Cross prayer line to lay at the feet of the King. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all who have died, especially those from our parish and those who are most in our thoughts and prayers in this month of the Holy Souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, bless John and Agnes Chrysimium and Bill Begley, for whom this Mass is celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, please help us to hear what your Spirit is asking of us and telling us. Help us to realize that we have the strength that we need for what the Spirit desires, that in all things we might become the people that you wish us to be, the people that deep down we wish to be, that we might gather all of us together before the throne of your Son and worship you in perfect unity throughout all eternity in your spirit. Hear our prayer, Father. Keep us always close to you. Amen. Our hymn during the preparation of gifts is number 726. Him to Christ the King, number 726. Brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Father, as we offer you the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. We pray through Christ our Lord. May the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, Father, truly just to give you glory. For you are the one God, living and true, 
existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in light unapproachable. And yet you, who alone are good and the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of us by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. <laughs> Give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, our Creator, we might have dominion over all your creatures in service to you. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time after time you offered us covenants, and through the prophets you taught us to look forward to your salvation. Father most holy, you so loved the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of our sister, the Virgin Mary, Jesus shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of your salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, your joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to the death that we prepared for him. But rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored your life to us. That we might live now no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sends the Holy Spirit from you, Father, first fruits for us who believe, so that bringing to perfection Christ's work in the world, the Spirit might sanctify creation to the full. And so, Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these, our offerings, that they may truly become the living body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant of love. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, he blessed and broke it, he passed it to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, your son gave thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples as he said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And so, Father, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming, this time in the fullness of his glory, we offer you his body and his blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the entire world. Please, Father, look upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church. In your loving kindness, grant to all who partake of this one bread, this one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we may become a living sacrifice to Christ in praise of your glory. Therefore, Father, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Holy Father, George, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the leaders of the church and those who take part in this offering, those of us gathered here before you, your entire people, all who seek you with a sincere heart. Please remember, too, all those who have died in the peace of your Christ, John, Agnes, Bill, and all the dead whose faith you have all alone have known. To all of us, your children, please grant, merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance and live forever with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her husband, and with all your apostles and saints in the fullness of your kingdom. And there, with the whole of creation, finally freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, all praise and all thanksgiving, now and forever. stand here at this altar with Christ, praying to the Father in their spirit. Let us pray then, as the Son has instructed us to do, that we might have that same spirit in us that he had, that same love for the Father and the Spirit and all of us. Let us use his very words. Our Father, Our Father who art Lord. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Wonderful Father, please deliver your children from every evil. Please grant us true peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, always safe from all distress, as we look forward to that blessed hope, the return of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <coughs> Lord Jesus, to your apostles you promised, I am leaving you peace. I am giving you my peace. Lord, do not look then on our sins, but on the faith and the hope of your church. Graciously do grant us all peace and unity in accordance with your blessed will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. 
Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace, Christ. Is there nothing that our God will do, will not do, to come to us and be with us? We have killed him, and yet he comes to love us yet. We have rejected him, and still he seeks us to bless us and fill us with life. This is truly the one that we can give our allegiance to, our Lord, our Master, our hope. This is God himself, Jesus of Nazareth. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ be our everlasting life. Our communion hymn is number 466. The King of Love, my shepherd is. Number 466. Nothing lack if I 
when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. When you come into Please join in the prayer after communion found on the inside cover of your hymnal. May the Holy Spirit permeate every cell in my body and may that spirit flow out from me to everyone I meet today. May God's spirit that guided Jesus be my guide and strength today. Brothers and sisters, let us complete our prayer. Having received the food of immortality, Lord, we ask that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the ruler of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, Jesus, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. May the Lord himself be with you all. And with your spirit. Having received the Lord in his body and blood, let us carry him and his love to all of those we meet today. And may he bless our efforts with good fruit. The Father, and the Son, and the Most Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. As we do so, we will sing number 581, soon and very soon. Number 581. Yeah. 